Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Had to do a little adjustment in the software here. Hi, Maksud. Hi, Birendra. This is a members chat class, of course. Everybody is welcome to watch. And uh, in this class, we are focusing on the reading section. And I'm going to explain step by step what to do in the reading to get those high band scores to get a band nine. Hi, Abhishek. Welcome more members. By the way, if somebody would like to become a member of our YouTube channel, just click the join button next to the subscribe button. If you don't see that button, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com with your questions and I'll help you further. Of course, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please check us out there. Uh, for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. We've got lots and lots of reading materials. We even have audio for the reading to help you uh, learn fluency pronunciation uh, while you read. Uh, we're one of the only uh, resources in the world that has audio for the IELTS reading material as well. Now, of course, you don't have that in the real exam, but that is really useful for your learning for the IELTS. Our websites look like this. This is the academic website here. Click that big red button to join our uh, premium package. And um, this is our general IELTS here. Thank you, Pavan, for letting me know. Yeah, I was doing some adjusting there in our streaming software, so that window uh, got left open. Thanks for letting me know, Pavan. I am paying attention to what you're saying. So, uh, okay, there we go. Um, Moni, welcome back again. Um, okay, so uh, this is our General IELTS website with the green background. Again, you can click that big red button to join the premium package there and begin learning for success. You can also get our exam books if you like uh, to read from uh, hard copy paperback. You can get our books from Amazon. Uh, search for A Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS and you'll find two books for each one. Uh, coming up in about 90 minutes, I will have a task two writing class that everybody uh, will be able to join in the comments and uh, get a little bit of back and forth dialogue. But again, for this class right now, it's members chat and we're going to get into some reading. This reading is coming from our second exam in our first book for those of you who have this. And if you have access to our premium package at ahelp.com, uh, this will be CD2 track five for the reading audio. So you can check out the reading audio there. Hi, Carolina. All right. Uh, so here we go, everyone. A little bit of reading practice today uh, with the right steps for high band scores. Uh, first step always when you're working to get a good score on your IELTS reading is to read the title. Always start with the title. Um, why would you start with the title? So why is it a good idea to start with the title? Well, because the title is the concise summary of the whole passage. Okay, a good title should always give the topic of the passage, should give the reader an idea of what they're about to read. So here we go, we read the title, uh, Lotteries Underlined, Positive Good or Unnecessary Wrong? Hmm, okay. So notice uh, something interesting here. In this title, um, the author decided to use a question mark uh, for the title. Uh, why did the author do that, members? So why do you think the author is using a question mark in the title? So why are they asking a question? Why does the author say positive good or unnecessary wrong? So why would the author do that? Usually a title does not have a question mark. It's, it's rare to see questions in the title of a passage. But here the author chose that uh, approach um, and it's a kind of strategy in their writing. Uh, why would they do that? So why would they use a question mark, positive, good, or unnecessary, wrong, lotteries, okay? Uh, Carolina, it's not, so we read the title to warm up our minds, yeah, but the question mark's not for a warm up. So this is um, an important note for uh, students to know. 
especially for academic students that are going to be doing lots of writing in university here. Okay. An author should only use a question mark in an essay if they too are unsure of the answer and they honestly uh, desire the reader's own thinking and opinion. Okay. Abhishek says, so uh, maybe, or sorry, Pavan. Pavan says, maybe he wants our opinion. Very clever, Pavan. That's exactly what the author does with the question mark. So good for you, Pavan. You get my super thumbs up for uh, nailing that concept. Okay. Um, Abhishek says, for someone who is good and for someone it's maybe negative. Yeah, so Abhishek, you're on the right path. You've started thinking about it. Okay. Uh, Nick Hill says, to get the interest about the debate in the passage. Yeah, okay, it's good. Now, this is a little tip here for part two, or sorry, part two, task two writing. Um, keep this in mind. Therefore, in task two, you should not, task two essays, okay, so I'm sidetracking a little bit here. Uh, you should not write uh, questions in your essay. Okay, um, sometimes uh, students do this and it is awkward. In task two, persuasive essay, you do not want your reader answering questions. Okay, so I've seen students do this uh, before in task two writing uh, where they will include uh, a question mark in the introduction, a uh, question in the introduction, and they think it's a good idea because they're getting their author th or their, sorry, their reader thinking about what they're writing, but it's usually not, okay? It's quite rare uh, to use question marks in essays, all right? So is that clear, members? Don't use questions. Uh, in your essay writing for task two or for task one, okay? Uh, it's not good. The only place where I should see questions in IELTS writing is in task one for the general IELTS, okay? You should not have questions in the task one for academic or the task two in general or academic, okay? So it's a, it's a unique strategy. You have to be very careful with it, all right? The only time we use it is when we're really unsure of the right answer, okay? So here, that's what's happening. So the author says, okay, lotteries. Lotteries, of course, is a form of gambling, right? So immediately you should start thinking about gambling, right? So a game of luck, all right? And is it good or is it wrong? Maybe, maybe not. They're going to present the debate, obviously. Um, so we predict here. Uh, what kind of ideas come to mind when you're predicting good or bad of lotteries? Okay, so predict the content of the passage. Okay, uh, lotteries, uh, good or bad. Uh, what are your predictions? Give me some notes here. So what comes to mind? Uh, what do you think of when you think about this debate of good or bad? Okay, what comes to mind? So for instance, for me, one that comes to mind is lose money, of course. Money. Become broke. Uh, addicted. Or addictive. Okay. Those are some negatives. Uh, Maksud says on society. So on society, what kind of um, effects might it have? Okay. So what kind of effects might lottery have on society? Um, good tax revenue for the government, right? If it's a government lottery. Okay. Maksud says bankruptcy. 
Uh, Nick Hill says, earn some money in the short run. Yeah, so uh, win lots of money and become rich. Why not? Right? That should come to mind. Uh, Abhishek says, legal, illegal, criminal. Yeah, those are good words. Legal, illegal, uh, criminal. Yeah, uh, those are all good words because lottery often leads to that. For Dobbs, very nice. So for Dobbs says entertainment. Yeah, Las Vegas, here we come, right? Entertainment. Sure. Um, and uh, Nick Hill says maybe leads to depression. Yeah, somebody loses all their money and they're addicted. That could be depressing. Absolutely. Okay, so those are some great ideas. Or not, but they work. Um, <clears throat> and now... As a next step, uh, we want to go to the questions, okay? So here uh, we have a which paragraph contains the following information, okay? Uh, note, by the way, you may use any letter more than once. Uh, again, remember, members, that skimming and scanning does not work for this type of question because if you're trying to skim read for the problem of gambling addiction, it could be at the end of the passage and skim reading the whole passage to find the answer for question one is going to take you way too long. So it's not the correct strategy. Skim reading and scanning is not a step-by-step -step strategy. It does not work for high marks as I always remind people. Okay, so what should you do for this kind of a question? When you see this, um, which paragraph contains the following information, what ideas come to mind as the correct strategies to start implementing? Okay, this kind of question should remind you of a couple of important points. It's a very popular question type, and I almost guarantee that you're going to see this question in both the academic and the general version of the IELTS exam in the reading um, because it's a great question to test real knowledge and understanding of English reading, right? So there are a couple of points that should come to mind. One is do not skim and scan, okay? So okay, it takes way too long to do that for this kind of... So uh, Nick Hill, Carolina says, yeah, paraphrase, read the question and paraphrase it. Yeah, very good. So you should read this question. Uh, read it. It's all in the passage. Paraphrase it. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Uh, what else comes to mind? Uh, Jainil, very nice. So Jainil says, actively read the passage. What do you mean by that? So, And what do we mean by actively read the passage here? So all of these points uh, should be coming to mind here for sure when you read this um, type of question. Uh, and what do we mean by actively? Yeah, Nick Hill, don't underline keywords. It's not necessarily going to help you. That's also distracting. It takes time as well. Yeah, um, and when we say actively, uh, what does that mean? remind you to do when you're reading a paragraph? Should remind you to, to do this one important step. And I'm actually looking for the specific answer here. So for Dobbs, Rajvir, what do we usually do? Um, and it's a kind of a, let's say, trick that I've showed you many times to know where you can find the right paragraph for the information. So Jainil says, visualize, include yourself with the passage. Absolutely. How do I keep track of the information? So how do I know what was in paragraph A, B, C, D? So how do I keep the order of information? Yeah, very good. So Pavan says, ask questions from yourself while you read. Um, and the most important one, Pavan, is the what question, okay? Always take a second. So with this actively, always take a second, and it really only takes a second once you practice. So take a sec to ask what 
is this paragraph about? Okay, so always take that second to ask, what is this paragraph about? The why and the how, Nick Hill, absolutely practice that. If you feel like I just can't get the why or the how, I'm using too much time, definitely do the what. Okay, definitely do the what. Okay, so keep that what, why, how uh, in mind and, and practice the whole what, why, how at home. Okay, but absolutely the what. So what is this paragraph about will really, really help you to figure this uh, question out quickly and accurately. Okay, all right, so let's do a little bit of paraphrasing here with this one. Um, the problem of gambling addiction. Uh, what, uh, what's, uh, yeah, absolutely, Carolina, you're the protagonist. You should always be, yeah, yeah. So be in the passage, be active, be the protagonist, be the hero of the story. That's right, Carolina. Um, so let's do a little bit of par paraphrasing here. The problem of gambling addiction, paraphrase that for me, please. Uh, those less fortunate are more likely to play the lottery, okay? So, um, people in difficult uh, situations are likely to gamble. So I'm paraphrasing this one. This is the kind of practice you want to do at home where you paraphrase it. Okay. Um, paraphrase number three for me. So uh, you do the odd ones, I'll do the even ones. So paraphrase one, paraphrase three, paraphrase five for me, please. Okay. Practice your paraphrasing as much as you can. And it's a very important key to getting a great score in the IELTS exam, all right? Not just in the reading, but in every uh, section, okay? So those less fortunate people in difficult situations, less fortunate people or people in difficult situations are more likely to play the lottery, are likely to gamble, have higher chances to gamble, okay? So Abhishek says the problematic, uh, the problematic of gambling obsession, the uh, difficulties of uh, gambling, of being obsessed with gambling. Yeah. So the challenges, okay, or the consequences of uh, being obsessed with gambling. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Oh, it says lottery is allowed in some countries. Um, yeah, so the laws surrounding Lotteries, okay, that could work as well. Um, Nishant, very good. Yeah, I just saw that camera fell asleep there. Uh, Nishant says issues caused by gambling. Um, absolutely, that's a good one, Nishant. I like that paraphrase, issues caused by gambling. Okay, good. Janiel says the difficulties of gambling for addicted people, okay, would be a good one. All right, absolutely. Um, Barendra says uh, authorize the lotteries. Um, that's bad grammar, Barendra, but it's a good idea. So... Um, for legality, um, authorize, uh, permission, I think is a little bit better word. So permitting uh, lotteries is a bit better than authorizing lotteries, perhaps. Okay. All right. But it's good. It's, you're building your vocabulary. So even though you don't have the right grammar um, in that case, Barendra, uh, you're learning that the word authorize is in some way connected to legality. Okay. So it's great. All right. It's good practice. 
Okay, good. So that's what you're doing with these. Um, the financial incentives for governments to uh, run lotteries, the uh, motivation of money for authorities to permit gambling. Okay, so the financial incentives for governments to run lotteries, the motivation of money for authorities to permit gambling. All right, okay, good. So that's what you're doing. And we have one left here. Uh, community initiatives are funded by uh, lottery proceeds. Social programs are sponsored by lottery revenue. Social programs are sponsored by lottery revenue. That would be another way. The more you paraphrase, the more advanced your English, the more advanced your communication. In fact, the trick to becoming better than an average native speaker uh, in English is to keep paraphrasing, to keep learning to paraphrase. I had a really good friend in university and um, he studied Japanese very, very hard, Canadian guy. And uh, Japanese people were <laughs> always amazed by him because he spoke Japanese and used Japanese better than some Japanese people. And they just couldn't figure out how he was able to do that. And his trick was just paraphrasing everything he wrote down. He would paraphrase in so many ways and then uh, eventually his vocabulary and grammar just became so advanced. Um, so that's the big trick in a language uh, to become extremely high level uh, is to just keep paraphrasing, keep pushing yourself to use new words, new expressions, new ways to express the same ideas. And then you become very, very um, rich in vocabulary and grammar. And then you can choose very specifically which words to use in what context. So always paraphrase, okay? All right. So true, false, not given. It's the next set of questions. Don't worry about that. Uh, we don't uh, look at true, false, not given until we finish reading the passage. And then here uh, we have a summary coming from the passage. And it's got its own title lotteries as reverse insurance, whatever that means. Okay. Um, so here we go. Read with me. The reason why people play the lottery can be viewed in terms of what is called reverse insurance. People buy insurance in order to prevent an accident from making them bankrupt. They pay a small amount or they pay small amounts each month so they don't have to pay the whole price of the something done. Like the lottery corporations, insurance companies turn a something in the long run. With insurance, we pay small amounts to avoid paying a massive amount. With the lottery, we pay small amounts so we might win the something. From this perspective, the lotteries make a lot of sense. And then we have some choices here. Uh, we don't worry about those until the end. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Carolina. I see that thumbs up there. And Carolina, you're on the right path. I can tell that you're, you know, always investing time. A little bit here, a little bit there, lots there. Um, and uh, I guarantee that eventually your English can exceed even the average native speakers, okay, who doesn't invest time to paraphrase. So, all right, students. So let's do this. Let's read. Um, we're going to read nice and fluent. You will read with me, and I will ask you the question of what is this paragraph about after each paragraph, okay? So read with me, okay? Here we go. Um, okay. Law, a lottery is a form of gambling where contestants purchase tickets with one or more tickets being drawn as winners at the end of the competition period. Often there is a jackpot winner who wins most or all of the prize pool. 
Today, national lottery jackpots can range from millions to hundreds of millions of dollars. It wasn't long ago that lotteries were outlawed almost everywhere in the world. Today, lotteries are legal in North America, Australia, and much of Europe and Asia. A question is raised over what has changed to make something previously seen as negative for society become common across the globe. If gambling is bad, why are lotteries so popular and why do governments support them? What is this paragraph about? What's the main idea of this paragraph? Not the essay, but the paragraph, right? So what is the main idea of the introductory paragraph? Okay, that's the question you need to ask yourself, of course, in the real exam in your head really quickly. Um, so what's the main idea here? Be concise, right? So, and accurate. Say it in just a few words and make sure that you say it all. Okay. Abhishek says it's the background of the lottery. I don't think so, Abhishek. There's a little bit of definition of what a lottery is, but I don't think that is uh, the main idea. When you think about the main idea of the introduction, um, think about the thesis, because the thesis is usually the main idea of the introduction. Not you. It's always the uh, main idea of the introduction. So think about the thesis when you think about the main idea of the introduction. So it's a good try, Abhishek, but that's not what it's really about, okay? So Janiel says the function of the lottery, Pavan says lottery and the allowance of lotteries. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so a couple of you are close. Uh, what's the thesis here, okay? In this case, the thesis, in fact, is a question, okay? A question is raised over what has changed to make something previously seen as negative for society become, uh, become common across the globe. If gambling is bad, why are lotteries so popular and why do governments support them? So that's the thesis. That's really what this paragraph is about. Okay. So in a concise way, um, I would say that this paragraph introduces the dual nature, good and bad, of lotteries. Okay, so that's what this paragraph really does, is it introduces the concept of good and bad, or good versus evil when it comes to lotteries. Okay, so it raises that question, raises the question of good and bad for lotteries. Okay, all right. So in the introduction, it's usually the thesis. In your body paragraphs, it's usually the topic sentence. So in most cases, that will be the first one or two sentences. Okay. And in the conclusion, it's more about the take-home message. So kind of like the introduction where it's the last sentence of the conclusion that gives you uh, the idea of what the conclusion is about. Okay, let's keep going here, students. So people buy lottery tickets for one chief reason. They want to win the jackpot. In the long run, lotteries are a bad bet. The odds of winning are always stacked against the player. That is to say the long-term expected return on the player's money is significantly less than the money paid for the tickets. This is how the lottery corporations make money on the lottery. The payout is far less than the revenue of the ticket sales. And the government takes the difference. If 1 million tickets are sold at $5 a piece and the jackpot is $3 million, then the government has made $2 million of profit in the process. We are forced to question why lotteries are so popular given their poor value for players. It's because of the thrill of possibly winning the jackpot, the anticipation of a life-changing win 
for the ticket purchasers, it's worth the money. It's the same reason why people gamble at casinos. Many people know they are not going to win in the long run at a casino, but the short-term thrill makes up for the long-term losses. Okay, so what's this paragraph about? All right, so what is body paragraph one about? Okay, and so this is your active reading practice. You always take that second to think about that valuable answer, which will help you to quickly and accurately answer all of the questions after the passage, right? So what is body paragraph one about here? How would you summarize that? I think there's a very simple summary. Uh, OS says revenue of lotteries. I think that's just part of it, OS. So I think you have um, a piece, but not the full. Okay, always be accurate too. So concise is important, OS. You're on the right track, keeping it short, but you need to be accurate, okay? So let's see what you come up with. Summarizing is really important. You want to practice this all the time at home. Ferdov says, government makes money manipulating people's behaviors. Um, yeah, I think you've got part of it. So Ferdov says, government makes money um, yeah. and people. So here there's the second half to that paragraph, right? Okay, so this is what I would say kind of captures all of that paragraph, all right? So what is body paragraph one about? Governments make money from lotteries, people have fun, and a few lucky ones make a lot of money. Would you agree that these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 words, I believe. Uh, would you agree that these 18 words kind of capture all of the body paragraph in as short a way as possible, more or less. I mean, if you're really clever, you might be able to cut that down into 10, 12 words, but that's roughly uh, it, right? Would you agree? Am I missing anything from the paragraph that was important? I don't think so. Um, do I have everything from the paragraph that seems to be really important? Yeah, I think so. So, it's good when you catch, you know, governments make money from lotteries. That was definitely there, all right? But it was also there that people have fun and some people get a lot of money, okay? Those two points were also in that paragraph and they were very important, all right? Okay, all right, so make sure you capture all of the paragraph, okay, in your answer, all right? Okay, good. So let's uh, keep focused, Parendra. Thanks for sharing. Stay focused. Here we go. C. Uh, read with me. The main argument against lotteries is that it acts as a tax on the poor, and such a tax is unfair. This is because statistics show that poor people are by far the most common purchasers of lottery tickets. There are two reasons why this could be the case. First, poor people have the most to gain by winning the lottery. Second, poor people are arguably less likely to have a statistical understanding of the lottery. They are less likely to realize that it is a bad bet. What is this paragraph about? It's about the fact that poor people play the lottery the most for certain reasons, okay? Because they can win and they don't know much about it, All right? Okay, let's keep going. So we want to get to those questions. We'll keep moving along. I want you to keep thinking about the what, okay? D, the main argument in favor of lotteries is that it is harmless fun which results in tax income that often goes straight to community programs such as sports or the arts. Many community programs rely solely on lottery finances to operate. So in this sense, the lottery is a positive good. However, 
there are many people, often poor people, who become obsessed with gambling and the lottery, and it starts to take over their lives. For these people, the lottery is detrimental. Starts to take over their lives. Um, one word. What is this saying here? What is this? What is this phrase? So this is a phrase here. Starts to take over their lives. Uh, what word is that giving us there? You should realize this when you're reading and go, aha, because you're doing paraphrasing. You're practicing the different techniques of paraphrasing. This one would be called descriptive paraphrasing because it's describing another word. What word is this describing to take over someone's life? That's right, Carolina, very good, addiction. So when alcohol takes over someone's life, they are obviously addicted to alcohol, okay? So take over someone's life, it's addiction, okay? When someone's addicted, then that substance or that activity has taken over their life. The person is no longer in control, okay? All right, so this one, uh, this paragraph, what is it about? It's about the benefit of the lottery for the community and the negative uh, for um, the individual who becomes addicted. All right, so that's clearly uh, what's going on here. Now, when you're reading, students, so there's a little bit of a snooze there, but uh, it's totally fine. All right, so when you're reading and you've read like A, B, C, or D, at this point, when you come to D, um, do a check of, um, of the um, main points of each paragraph, okay? So uh, sometimes uh, students have a little bit of difficulty to get all the way to F or G. So I recommend that when you're practicing at home, especially if you haven't done a lot of this, then a really good strategy for active reading is, um, so this is a strategy, okay? Uh, once you get to paragraph D, which in essence is the fourth paragraph, um, check your list of uh, topics and your memory, okay? So um, what was paragraph A about, okay? So we're just gonna do a quick check here. So what was paragraph A about in this reading? So this is a memory exercise that I'm doing with you basically here. Uh, because a lot of students complain that when I read the passage, I don't remember what I read, and I don't want you to have that terrible feeling. So this is one way to get around that, okay? Once you get to paragraph D, check your memory, check your log, okay? And A, B, C, D, log, okay? So paragraph A, what was it about in a really concise way? So Carolina says, introduction to pros and cons of lottery. Yeah, so the debate of pros, cons, of lottery. Good. Very good, Carolina. What was paragraph B about? Okay, yeah, very good, Nick Hill. Good. So what was paragraph B about? This is where sometimes students start scratching their head going, ooh, yeah, what was paragraph B about again? Okay, and so what was paragraph B about? Next paragraph, paragraph B. Give me that one. Carolina says, governments make money, people have fun, and a few lucky ones make money. Yeah, so gov and few people make money, people have fun. Good, C. What was C about? And you want to be nice and fast here, right? Nice and fast, okay? So uh, C, what was it about? Okay, give me paragraph C. 
Okay, give me that one nice and fast. Again, chop, 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 chop. So eventually you want to work towards speed, right? So accuracy, being concise, and speed. That's going to get you the high marks, okay? So Carolina says, C, people in difficult situations are likely to gamble. Okay, so... Um, to gamble because they have much to win and little knowledge. They are taxed. Okay, so impoverished, impoverished means poor. Poor people are likely to gamble because they have much to win, little knowledge about it, and this is a tax, so it's an unfair tax. Yeah, I like that, okay, oh, it's very good. So instead of they are taxed, unfair tax. Unfair tax on the poor, right? Okay, and uh, what was D about? So what was paragraph D about? Okay, there was some, uh, that was the one that we just read. Okay, hopefully everybody remembers that one. Okay, recency effect argues that you should. So D says, society sponsored programs from revenue, but people get addicted. Okay. So to get really good at reading, academic reading, where you're not just reading for pleasure uh, or, you know, something uh, on in the news or whatever, uh, but where you're actually tested on the knowledge of what you're reading, uh, what you want to read is what you want to do is you want to work on uh, concise. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this: concise plus uh, accurate plus fast equals high band score. Okay, makes sense. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. And this is what you want to do at home when you're practicing these reading passages, right? So uh, you want to do it in this fashion, okay? Yeah, everybody makes sense. So you want to practice being concise, being accurate. So not so concise that you lose information. It's a very interesting balancing game. And of course you want to build your speed, right? So you can get it done in the given time and then you'll get those high band scores, okay? So that's what I'm pushing you for today. We're clear on A, B, C, uh, D. We can go on to E and then continue the same. Uh, one interesting way to look at the lottery and why people participate in it is to imagine it as a kind of reverse insurance. People buy insurance for their home or cars so that if something bad happens to it, they do not have to pay the entire cost of the damage. In other words, they pay a little bit each month so that they don't have to pay a large amount at one time. They pay these smaller amounts to insurance companies and those insurance companies make money in the long run. So paying insurance is not a good bet either, just like the lottery. With the lottery, we pay little amounts every once in a while so that maybe we will hit the jackpot. With insurance, we pay a little to save a lot. And with the lottery, we pay a little to win a lot. When looked at it in this way, the popularity of the lottery is more easily understood. Okay, what is it about? It's about comparing uh, insurance to lottery and the inverse to understand lottery. F, here we go. Okay, and I see all of those uh, acknowledgements. Carolina Oas, Nick Hill, Abhishek, Berenger, great. I'm happy for that, so it's clear. Um, F, when it comes down to it, lotteries are a choice. Yes, they amount to a tax, but so do monthly fees we pay to insurance companies. If people want to pay a few dollars here and there for a little fun, excitement, and a small chance to win a monstrous amount of money, then what's the harm? Additionally, lottery monies fund many valuable community programs which otherwise would have trouble operating. Playing the lottery responsibly is fun, exciting, and maybe, just maybe, extremely profitable. 
So what is this conclusion about? It's about the reasons people play the lottery and why it exists to fund community programs, to have fun and maybe win a ton of money. Okay, so that's what this is about. Fantastic. Okay, so now I have all this information in my mind. And so now I can answer these questions quickly, accurately, and confidently. Here we go, students. Let's see how well we do. Okay. So which paragraph contains the following information? The problem of gambling addiction. That should be really easy now because I even showed you the paraphrase um, where people uh, lose control of their lives. And I said, okay, look, that's addiction. So uh, number one, which paragraph is the right answer for that? Yeah, for dogs, very good at D, absolutely, right? D. Uh, those less fortunate are more likely to play the lottery. That should be easy. Just give them to me. So students, you don't have to, don't wait for me to read it. Just give me one, two, three, four, as you read them. You can give me all of them at once this time, okay? So in this case, you don't need to be patient. I just want to see how fast you can do it, okay? The legality of lotteries the financial incentives for governments. I can basically do them as I read them. Yeah, so number two is C. Yeah, the legality of lotteries. Throw them out at me. Okay, just throw them in there. Get them in there. Okay, so number two is C, absolutely. Community incentives are funded by lottery proceeds. This should really only take you like a minute now. Very good, three is A, yeah. So that was introducing the debate, right? Um, they're legal in Europe, North America. They were illegal in the past. Excellent. Number four, the financial incentives for governments to run lotteries. Let's see that one. Should be fast. Uh, number four, Abhishek, I don't think it was D. There was a paragraph that very clearly explained the financial incentives of governments. Okay. Number four. Remember the summary when we went through it? Nope, it's not E. Okay. Remember, B, governments make money, people make money. Uh, Jainil says, B, very good, Jainil. And number five, community initiatives are funded by proceeds. Number five would be D, again. Yeah, absolutely, right? And that was addiction and D, so D comes up again. So D, C, A, B, D, those are the correct answers, okay? Um, not F. Because um, remember the summaries? Here, if I show it to you, you'll agree. Don't forget your summaries. Okay? So government and a few people make money. People have fun. So those are the incentives. Why do people uh, play lottery? Because they have fun. They make money. So that would be paragraph B. Governments make money. That would be paragraph D. Uh, or sorry, B. And then D here. So society-sponsored programs... Uh, from revenue. Um, yeah, there's a little bit in the conclusion, but five is more D than F. Okay, you're choosing the best answer and D is a better answer than F. Okay, um, true, false, not given. Lotteries are outlawed almost everywhere. Is it important to know the law around lotteries? Yes, it is. Is it true that lotteries are outlawed almost everywhere today? Nope, they were, but these days they're, it's legal in many places, so I would say false. Okay, so I know it's given and I know it's false because it's present tense, are outlawed, okay? This is passive, present tense, so it's false, okay? In the long run, a person who plays the lottery should expect to lose money. 
Is it important to know about uh, what happens to people that play the lottery? Yeah, of course it's important, so I know that it's given, okay? I know that it's given, now I need to figure out if it's true or false. If in the long run, a person who plays the lottery should expect to lose money, most people, if you ever tried the lottery or heard about it, I'm sure will know that that's true. IELTS will not lie to you about that. Um, so it's important and it's true, Abhishek. That's right. So it's true. Number eight, lotteries are popular because they serve as a pleasurable diversion from everyday life. Okay, is it important for me to know that lotteries are popular because they are a way to uh, ignore the problems of everyday life. Maybe it is, but it definitely seems like this part is too much detail. So too much detail, not given is the best bet. Okay, so I would say not given, all right, not given. Uh, many people play the lottery without an understanding of its statistical background. Is it important to know why people play the lottery? Yeah, it's definitely important to know why people play the lottery, so it should be given. Is it true that many people play the lottery because they don't understand the statistics of lottery, that you have a 1 in 20 million chance of winning the lottery? You have a one in three million chance of being hit by lightning. Um, yeah, most people don't get it. Uh, we don't run around worried about lightning hitting us, but we play lottery thinking that we're going to win, even though it's seven times it's likely. So um, this one would be true. Okay. All right. Um, the last question, I'm going to leave that for you members. So try it out on your own. That one is the paragraph one. Uh, here, I just wanted to kind of show you that you can go really, really quickly if you have good active reading and you're going step by step. Remember, today's topic was going step by step. Here's this last question. Fill in the spaces. You can check this out uh, later in the video when it's posted. And you can solve that on your own. Here are the answer choices. Okay. Back at the video, you can email these to me, members. I'll give you the right answers for them. And again, just to sum up the important point of today's lesson is step-by-step -step strategy is definitely the right choice to get band seven, eight, nine, okay? Not quick little tricks and tips like skimming and scanning. Those are not nearly as effective as training yourself to read actively and going step-by-step -step through the passage and the question. So that was the most important takeaway from today's lesson. To learn many of these strategies uh, and practice these steps, uh, please visit our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Do yourself a favor, spend a couple dollars, join the premium package, and begin learning uh, useful strategies for success on the IELTS and in your future studies. It's well, well worth it. And I will be back in 30 minutes to teach you some of these useful strategies for task two writing with a brand new task two writing question. You're very welcome, Abhishek. Great participation today, Carolina. Nice job. Nick Hill, great job, Barendra. Uh, hopefully I will see all of you shortly. I'm Adrian signing out for now from Budapest. See you soon.